connected to the A foils to achieve the basically the call camber morphing of the A foil. So basically, I I touted it as a shape morph. So this is my agenda. I'm going to give a brief introduction, and any works are there in the literature about this bistability and uh, incorporating the bistability uh, into the foil shape morphing, and some uh, the motivations and the, uh, based on the limitations by like the research gaps, and then what are the methods I use in the uh, some basic benchmark results in the way So this is the introduction. So in conventional being has a secondary control surfaces like the other ones. They have a mostly like joint structures, joint and controlling devices, which uses the power, electrical power mostly. Um, so these conventional wing uh, uh, control surfaces has different uh, limitations that kind of due to those giants, there were so, so many frictional uh, losses with the arrangers and it will take more energy in terms of the electrical. So these are the limitations, uh, and we spend most most of the losses of the energy. Mm -hmm. So there is a scope to uh, look for any new assembly system that will make the, like uh, will reduce the losses in terms of the frictional losses. There the idea got it the shape mode. So basically, shape mapping is uh, just changing the shape, and uh, it will reduce the traditional control surfaces. And it will extend the flight envelope because let's suppose the let's suppose you take the ailerons. If you if you if you alternate to use this shape model, you can uh, try to achieve the lift and uh, reduce the drag so that flight flight envelope will be raised. And the of course the wing will be lighter and much more energy efficient. And the, basically we are talking the camber model here. Camber model. Uh, so in literature, what are the works? To achieve the best ability. So basically, like there was uh, very quite a few uh, literature there uh, to achieve the best ability. One is the variable stiffness by laminates. There they use this the some curvature shapes, uh, fibers incorporated into the laminates so that they achieve the best stability. And they use the SMAs directly, but with some joints. Here the there was like scissor mechanism they used, even uh, it just uh, it's not replacing the conventional because there were so many giants also there, and some uh, literature works which involves the uh, like bistable uh, variable stiffness laminates with uh, MX, MFC actuators, these microfiber uh, controlling uh, fiber actuators, and also the uh, some uh, tailored composite structures with the systematically arranging the symmetric and unsymmetric uh, composite laminates in order to get the bistability. Okay, I forgot to mention what is a bistability. Bistability means bistability shape means. Uh, let's suppose it takes a take a uh, composite plate. It, it can achieve the two uh, stable shapes. It can uh, it can achieve the two stable shapes. That means like they are the stable at the stable shape, energy will be less. So out of these uh, literature, there were some limitations. Basically. This conventional that as a secondary control surfaces and the joints. In the literature, they, they use the SMOS, but it has a scissor mechanism and joints. And uh, in the variable stiffness laminates, it's very complex to manufacture because there is a uh, shapes which is hard to manufacture uh, those fiber shapes. And the mathematical and FM is very complicated in those assembly uh, of these composites. And there is a stiffness criteria also while using the SMOS directly with the joints. And uh, while using the piezo and MFC actuators, these are the limitations because their strain output is very less with like limited one and the temperature sensitivity is very low and those electrical noise also very high and they use a more electrical energy. So these are the some kind of uh, limitations for MFC and piezo actuators. So it will lead to some other alternative for these control surfaces, which is uh, methanol SNLY. So basically, methanol, methanol means uh, nickel titanium alloys, which is developed by the uh, Naval Ordnance Engineers. So the idea is just embedded into embedded the SMA wires in the composite structure. Basically, it's an unsymmetrical composite laminate, so that we may achieve the bistable. So bistable configuration of the using uh, laminates we can achieve through SMA wires. Let uh, and then 
these semi embedded uh, laminates can be incorporated to the airfoils. These are the motivations so that uh, airfoil uh, camber uh, shape modeling can be achieved. Uh, let, let me check these are the motivations can we achieve with the semi embedded laminates. So, uh, take the uh, SMA wire and how to model it. What are the uh, prominent properties of the methanol wire? So basically, there are two predominant properties of the methanol. One is uh, it has a super superior thermomechanical properties. It can uh, work even in thermal actuation, in also mechanical actuation also. And it is it has two shape memory effect. It means like even if you heat it or cool it, there is a stability occurring with the uh, SMAs. It means like it regains its original service position, even if it is goes to plastic deformation also. And super elasticity, when it is goes to plastic plasticity also, it will re, uh, regain its original position. And there is a, due to heat, heating and the cooling differences, and there is a mechanical losses, there we get the hysteresis losses also. So we, Try to preclude this, one of these uh, property of the SMA wires. Uh, that is a uh, two, two way shape memory alloy. This two shape, sorry, two way shape memory effect. That is, uh, it can regain its original position by giving the temperature activation. So, this is the model, the literature from the Travis Turner. Uh, he uh, defined what are the, like, how the SMA stress recovery happening with the temperature activation. These are the like uh, axial constitutive law for the SMA wise at the two different effective uh, at, at two different temperatures. Like AS means like uh, the starting temperature of the oscillator. I will explain what is the oscillator and Martin said. Uh, so basically how the methanol wire achieved it to, uh, by stability. So methanol the material which has a two by uh, stable configuration or microstructure. One is a austenite, which is a high temperature phase, stable stable phase, and one one more is a martensite, the low temperature is stable phase. So it will operate between those uh, austenite and martensite with the temperature actuation. By let's see, so at the low temperatures. I think, yeah, at the low temperature, it is, it has the martensite phase and at high temperature, it has a, a austenite phase change or a stable phase. So by using these properties of the ethanol, we try to incorporate and try to get some benchmark results by using this semi wires embedded into the unsymmetric laminate, which is a CFRP. So these are the properties and these are the properties of the SMA wires used for the uh, for the FEA like uh, numerical FEA software. Try to get the bistability of the laminate. So in uh, FEA, we use the static analysis and we use the cell and wire element uh, for the laminate and these temperature loadings and the temperature difference between uh, temperature applied on the laminate. So I will say something about these results. We consider a square plate, which is of 150 by 150, and we embedded this SMA wire into the this CFRP laminate. Basically, it has uh, eight layers, 90 flies for the first one, and the zero flies the next one. So in, in, uh, in the middle of the laminates, the SMA wire is embedded. Um, and we apply some boundary conditions. These boundary conditions, uh, displacement continuity for uh, laminate uh, SMA wires embedded into the laminate. So by applying the curing temperature for the whole CFRP flake, we we can achieve one biostable shape cost. That is for curing, and then apply the uh, temperature activation with uh, some delta T uh, onto the SMA wire. There we getting the other stable shape, which is uh, evident that there was quite uh, eight mm uh, displacement, out plane displacement in both by, by stable shapes. 
And uh, you can see in the graphs for the same case, there's a, at uh, about 180 degrees, uh, there's a snap through occurs and uh, there's an energy density which supports the uh, shape of uh, snap through. And uh, yeah, these bistable uh, characteristics of the laminate can be incorporated into the airfoil and try to off the trailing edge of the, of the uh, airfoil. So we done, uh, we just taken the same plate. I think you can see this same plate with angle, uh, with angle onto the airfoil. It has a embedded SMA wire and it is a NOCA, NOCA 23012 airfoil we've taken from the, their website, the point data and try to uh, model it in the uh, abacus. So there, these are the boundary conditions were applied. Uh, the basically this D shape of the airfoil is clamped because more in particular like uh, practical cases it is mostly filled with the form so it will be like fixed one uh, clamped one and same uh, displacement continuity applied at the uh, SMA embedded into the laminate and all the all the joints uh, onto the airfoil so basically we got some results. But the problem is there was uh, much magnitude of the displacement, outer plane uh, displacement happened at the, uh, at the airfoil. And uh, there was quite a bit of 8 mm, about 8 mm trailing edge displacement uh, happened at the trailing edge. But uh, we thought like there was some stiffness criteria, st some stiffness uh, reduction happened, uh, we thought. So we go for the next case by uh, checking on to the checking on the literature and try to uh, uh, try to model with uh, three spars and two plates two laminates so basically we got the uh, 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 um, needed uh, shape warping of the trailing edge so you can see in the graph uh, displacement on the temperature like first first stable step uh, uh, around like 16 mm we got and then uh, it is come back it flops to about 8 mm in the second by stable shape basically these plates will take first by, by uh, first stable shape there we got the first uh, uh, first displacement of the trailing edge for the second by stability of the composite laminate we are uh, getting the uh, second displacement of the trailing edge so this is the basic idea. These are the best benchmark results. And there was so much, so a lot of uh, work need to be done. Uh, it's been a like, couple of work only. So there is so much way forward to it. We have to uh, try to validate with analytical model and experiments, the same thing. And uh, we try to go for wide distribution across the uh, laminate and go for the optimum and the number of wires also. And uh, displacement energy uh, analysis also need to be done. And tessellated plates means like we can combine parallelly in a series manner those composite plates so that we can get the multi stability. Those multi stability can uh, affect the, the shape mapping of the trailing edge. And yeah, analytical mathematical model need to be developed. And uh, yeah, uh, these are the like. Uh, dynamic analysis and uh, and axotic and woven fabric skin material also uh, can be checked with this uh, laminates. So out of this work, the conclusion is we can uh, can embed the SMA wires fully into the CFRP laminate, and about 8 mm outer plane displacements in both stable shapes can, are achieved. And uh, we can incorporate it, incorporate this laminate into the NOCA A file. And uh, for the uh, second uh, model, we uh, we try we achieve 8 mm uh, trailing edge displacement. So these are the conclusions. Thank you. Uh, no question. My uh, recommendation. Yeah. <laughs> um, I did something similar some years ago and had a lot of problem in incorporating the SMA wire in the composite. So everything we acquired uh, 
with an analysis was uh, lost because of the manufacturing part. So I don't say that I'm not a manufacturer. So I recommend you to start experiment as soon as possible sure. because there are some difficulties yeah. there. So, uh, next plan will be the food. Yeah. So, I don't say that it's impossible <laughs> because it's possible, but there are some issues uh, that we found, in my view, you know, that uh, it's possible to overcome, but it takes some more time than was expected. Good information. So, start as soon as possible. The temperature actuation SMA voice, what affect the basic behavior of composites? So, Yes, uh, it affects, right? Like, uh, okay, you, are, you mean that the temperature will affect, I think it will affect, but locally, not globally of the Yeah, Yeah, maybe the, because the temperature range will be in, uh, I think, uh, 210 to 250, 350, that range. I think those uh, CFRP laminates can, that can yeah, be it can be It's just a couple of months that he's been into this. Project. Yeah, yeah. It's more of a conceptual study. And um, I think these two questions are kind of related in terms of the uh, uh, impact of the material. So, because it's a combination, you're looking at uh, an SMA along with a CFR. Uh, so, the compatibility might be an issue, which is why. Uh, Professor Visagni was talking about uh, the possibility of uh, issues during the experiments. So we have uh, uh, the concept is fine, but we have to look at probably uh, alternative materials like shape memory polymers are very uh, common these days. So you can look at um, how uh, different form factors, of course, geometric form factors, which will be more compatible with your uh, basic composite, and then. Uh, we can play around with that, uh, but we can continue with the concept, but you have to uh, give it a thought for the uh, type of materials and uh, we'll see if we can get some small experiment going. So uh, we can ensure that we can experimental compatibility, yeah, yeah. Yeah. which is important. Also, the temperature uh, that also Priyadarshini mentioned is also very, very important because uh, uh, many of these may not be able to sustain. Uh, so some of the uh, matrices that she was talking about, thermoplastic and things like that, you can probably look at that depends on the temperature range. Uh, but even if they, it is applicable, uh, like, well, what will happen is the property can get degraded uh, on these properties that you have. So you have to account for that change in the properties of the uh, base materials with the uh, temperature. So it could be a part of the uh, model itself. So we can uh, incorporate those things. So. The topic is definitely interesting. So if you are able to solve a little bit few issues and so on, then I think that. Have any publications related to that? I have a conference yeah. publication because we did not, okay. I guess I use a conference okay. publication because at one point it was not so good and <laughs> we did not. Uh, the, and when, when it doesn't work, you yeah. not lots more yeah. than when it works. So it's good. <laughs> But I think that if you saw a little bit the experiment that compatibility, the manufacturing the inclusion and so on, then then it would be good. But, uh, but so this is my <laughs> try so, so there are two things here. One is the material compatibility, and the other is also the geometry involved, because you're putting a wire into between the layers. So to be a source of uh, a delamination initiation and things like that. So you have to explore from both aspects. And the fact that uh, the coefficient of uh, thermal expansion is different between both, <clears throat> like, like I'm sure it's not easy to make a to get continuity between the wire and the. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. We have fuel tanks, uh, uh, brains, uh, also right? so when we heat it, uh, so that may be a danger for the fuel. Like we are heating it so much at 350 degrees centigrade. Fuel heating. Yeah, and like as he was mentioning, it's more of a local thing, and um, typically you have a, a well insulation between that. Uh, oh. So, uh, major issue. And also, uh, special techniques where how the engine is attached to it. That's like that. It may not be at all places. His uh, focus is on the trailing edge. 
So, yeah. um, of course, we have to see because yeah, it yeah. could also be How the much, engine uh, exhaust and yeah. things like that. So, a lot of complications are there. But uh, I think it's more of a conceptual study, right? As of uh, so this is a distinction I'd like to make between uh, in the schedule. There are some talks which are one-hour talks and some which are half-an-hour talks. So the one-hour talks are typically by students who have already uh, done a reasonable amount of work. The half-an-hour is students who have just started a few uh, a month or a couple of months. Uh, they are just vet vetting their uh, problem definitions. So we'll have to give them that, that benefit of that. Yeah. So you have also tried the distributed uh, wire phone. Yes. So try it. In yeah. Actually, with the distribution of the wires, we basically we get the edge efficient. Uh -huh. edge efficient. So it's only so difference. At lower temperature, you're able to slam the yes. later. Yes. Also, grass transition temperature for epoxy is around one twenty. Why are you using asymmetric uh, laminate? Yes. That will create a couple of things. Yeah, yes. If you use the asymmetric in laminate only, then you got the best thing because uh, there is a strain difference between the fiber directions. Here only you got the certain structures. Yeah, it's an interesting point you brought up because um, uh, it also gels well with uh, what she was talking about, adaptive buckling. Yeah. Uh, there are certain things that are actually uh, what could be uh, considered a problem in a, for a long period of time, uh, especially by the industry because of their conservative nature, could actually be opportunities. So you try to utilize them to see how you can uh, benefit uh, taking forward. So the other example that you talked about, anti-symmetric or uh, any asymmetric laminate for that matter, uh, even helicopters have used anti-symmetric uh, layups sometimes to get the extension twist coupling to a beneficial uh, uh, utility. So it's all a question of uh, seeing how you uh, pose your design problem. And uh, based on that, you arrive at uh, the uh, laminate configuration. Of course, it will take a while for the industry to accept that. But what Jairaju presented yesterday, for example, where uh, we can have a theoretical framework, a computational framework, which can then uh, talk about how we can uh, uh, probably influence the uh, certification decisions based on that. Um, it, it's a long way, but I think uh, these are things that uh, we can afford to do uh, in academia so, so that uh, it has uh, some kind of an impact down the line. Yeah, I think we are getting late for lunch, so we'll uh, meet again at two.